All right, so I've got this scope. I was going to do a little bit of follow-up on here, and this is the SDS 1104XE, as you would have seen in the previous video. I'll just do a bit of follow-up, and um, I was going to play around with like the seal decoding. I didn't show it before, so I've got a Siglent test board here. Um, this is the STB3, which Siglent very kindly gave to me previously when I um, did the uh, 1202XE, the two-channel version of the scope, and. Um, I did that earlier, and they gave me this board as a gift, I suppose, for doing that. So this allows you to do some signal tests, some a bit more advanced signal testing and stuff like that compared to what I was doing before, where the um, I had to make my own seal <laughs> uh, injector in order to do the testing. So um, I've got this set up on uh, using. I'm currently set to SPI, and you can see here it's triggering all quite nicely and showing data decoding just here. Um, it's just rolling through, and if I bring this out a little bit, you see there's lots of packets of data here, and um, it's recognising all the packets and maybe so that's all working just fine. The um, it's a bit of lighter, it's not the best here. I'm, I'm on holiday right now, <laughs> and I bought it. I bought it with me to uh, play around with to give me something to do when I get bored, and um, so it's all fine. You can zoom in to a packet and uh, expand it out. And it will show the data in here, and also got the list view turned on, which is currently overlaying a bit, unfortunately, but you get the idea. Um, do you want to turn channel one off? I'm not even using it. <coughs> okay, so it gives you an idea of what it's doing. So it shows the read my packets and, and uh, the bit size and things like that. So it does all those features that you expect. I'm currently doing um, triggering on serial, right? So it's using the IT squared C protocol for triggering. And um, I've got the channel set up for clock and data, and uh, it's just fine on that one. So it does what you expect it to do. Um, you can also set the triggering point. So if I bring this in a little bit, see the trigger is actually not quite in the center. I'll bring it over. All right, it's slightly, and it's in the next step here. So it's got the initial write bit, and then it's got the read bit. Um, and it's triggering at the start of the read bit. If I change the position to say start, then it's moved it over and it's actually the beginning of the data. All right, let's bring it in a little bit so you can see it. Um, or if I do stop position, then it's at the end of the data. So it's um, if you've got a, you know a long string of data, you try to analyze the start stop bit stuff like that, then um, it allows you to do that, which is quite handy. And restarts obviously at that point, which I had before, which gives you a nice even spread, and it just it triggers a little bit better actually, so it's quite nice. Um, and no ACK, if you've got no acknowledgement, it will trigger on that. Um, I haven't played around with this data yet, this is also something you can use when you're looking for particular data. Um, address length, and you yeah, know, we're addressing data length, and normal data length, so you can set it to what you want. Um, and bite size, things like that. So it's all very um, detailed, and that's, that's just on the triggering side of things, right? Um, so I'm going to leave that back at uh, back at restart because I like it there. And so we're going to decode menu, which is very similar actually. It's actually a bit confusing between the two menus because they, they look the same, but you also got the little key which is decode, makes it a little bit easier. Um, and so I've got it set to I squared C right now. Um, so you do I squared C, SPI, UART, CAN, LIN. I'm going to try all these out. Um, I may or may not record them all. Um, this board outputs, I think, all of those actually. Um, so I can probably test all of them. And also, you've got the channel settings and threshold limits for clock and data in this case. Um, read right bit on and off. We're using that. And display is the list feature, All right? So I'll just like to add the list feature one on. Um, right, and you've got list, can be, you've got two decode options in here. So you can set each one up for different features, and you can choose which one you're going to display. And you can link it as well to the triggering. So um, I've got decode one set as triggering. Um, and now it's not triggering because it's not linked to it anymore, All right? So there we go, DK1. So it just means you can control the data that way as well. 
Okay, I think I've got this set to. Uh, what was I set to? SPI, is it? Hold on, I forgot what I've got to set to. SPI, yeah. So, um, turn the coding off. And you can see I've got the same data here. Signal comes up here from the test board and it jumps around a little bit as it's supposed to, I believe. Um, unless we've got an unstable trigger, I'm not sure, but it seems to be okay. Um, same deal in here. It's got the same options. Um, you can have rising and folding clock, but in this case, I want folding clock. Um, I can't have um, mozzie turned off, but it doesn't matter. I'm using MISO. You can set threshold now on two. Chip select, you can set thresholds. Um, so if I adjust this around, you'll see it stops triggering. There you go. All right. Um, this is not chip select. And then you got chip select. All right. Threshold the opposite direction. And also a clock timeout, which is quite a handy one. Um, which means you can base it on the clock timer. So we got the, the downtime in between pulses on the clock. You know, once it runs out of time, then it will start. It will assume that the next clock will be a trigger, and it will start from that. So that's quite a handy one um, because it gives you the opportunity to uh, to see it. Right, so you can say obviously adjust it up and down as well as you need to to make sure you get a stable trigger. Um, well, let's put it back on to you've got these other options here SPI trigger set, data lengths, bit position well, maybe I'm try playing with these yet, maybe it'll stabilise it oh, no. bit value so you can see if you want to trigger on certain bits There we go, let's stabilise that. Yeah, so I only did that. So there we go, so I'm actually, I've got that triggering stable now. So there we go, it's now says signal constantly with the other data changing behind it like I had before in the other display. Alright, so, yes I did have a triggering issue, but that's fine, I sorted it out. Um, so yeah, that SPI also works obviously. Um, same deal, we can do like you know, you can be zoomed out and grabbing all the data, and um, you can then zoom in and take a closer look, and it will display it under here and then the list. Right, so I've now got it doing UART decoding. Um, I've got the TX and like channels both hooked up. Well, I've got them hooked up to the same channel, but the um, independently, but I've got them set to be both be the same channel. So if I go into let's turn decoding off. Um, RXTX both on channel 3. I've got a threshold set of 1.3 volts and that's producing the signal thing in the list here. So um, if I go to list, scroll through the list, and there you go. There's the data. So all good there. So that's doing what it's supposed to do too, so no issues there. Um, the Again, the trigger is also tied into it, so if you're changing in one place, it changes in the other as well, so they are actually linked together. It's not obvious that's the case, but um, they are. So um, it makes things a little bit easier, you know, doing you know, trigger settings, stuff like that, it changes in both places, you change it in one. And bus configuration in this case, in this board, it's doing 9600 board, that's the double length. And so on. All right. All right. So here we go. I've got it set up on uh, CAN bus now, and uh, carry around with this, and it seems to be working fine too. Um, these are protocols I don't normally use. I mean, I'm only familiar with SPI and um, I squared C. These other ones are, are foreign to me, so I'm sort of I'm not 100% sure I've got these right, but I think that they seem to be working. I mean, they're giving the correct protocol data. Um, so it seems to be configured correctly, you know, set the thresholds and stuff like that to be medium range and it's all fine. Um, and also you've got the list display and stuff like it's still running. But uh, again the triggering, um, the one I've got this on edge triggering, why is it on edge triggering? 
that might explain why I think I might change something else playing around cereal canvas here we go all right so so these are the same as in the deco menu it's no different all right. um, as far as this bit goes I don't know what I'm doing there <laughs> this is new to me so someone that's familiar with um, this kind of thing I mean it's got a ball racer here which is 50 kilobit um, but uh, this is stuff which I really just don't know <laughs> this isn't something I understand I don't use these things um, so yeah but let's see this seems to work just fine just sitting in the data through in packets you can see there a little bit Right, so mix individual packets and as you zoom out also you get more and more on the screen and so it sees more and more so no problem there I mean it's all fine so I've got uh, Lin decoding running now again this is one which I'm not familiar with um, and all the decoding schemes are now to decode binary decimal hex and ASCII so I'll be running an ASCII anyway so you can see the text properly but um, it does all those decoding formats, which is great. Probably using ASCII because that's what the uh, data is supposed to be represented as. And uh, again, got this link to trigger off thing. I guess it goes on there. Trigger one is what I'm set to. So yeah, it's uh, all working alright. So the uh, the actual. Uh, decoding schemes and everything all seem to be working you know as you'd expect them to uh, if I stretch this out a little bit you'll see the data on the bottom of the screen here popping up uh, so uh, again I so say this is a, a, a serial protocol I'm not familiar with so um, yeah so let's you know run it through its paces and rows and it seems to be doing what it's supposed to do the data represents what represented here is as per the manual for this board, so um, you know, as it sell puts are supposed to be, so that's working correctly. Uh, I can't fault anything there. Um, I haven't noticed any bugs or glitches or anything, it all seems to be working just fine. Right, so now I've just got this thing outputting a PWM signal to scope. Now, I've just play with this settings on here. So, I don't have all this sharp in camera, but you can just see the glitching in here where it's got obviously the pulse width modulation going on. Well, tenor color gradient on it stands out a lot more. Uh, you can see what's happening here with the actual pulse width changing. I'll turn on persistence for one second, and you can see the actual range it's running on. All right, so uh, uh, those are nice features to have on here, you know. Um, and, uh, you can clear it as well so it refreshes. Um, yeah, I think that's probably what I need to show on that. That's what I was just showing the, the PWM because that's a you know interesting looking waveform, I suppose, in what it can do. All right, so this also shows this color gradient thing. On. You turn it off, it disappears quite a lot. Um, I increase intensity without change it. Yeah, there we go. So bring intensity up, it shows up a bit more. Um, Set moderate attention to. But uh, yeah, that's why I tend to leave it on because it just makes things stand out a lot better. But, uh, so that's that part. That's all the signals done. Now, one thing is I did want to mention when I was playing around with these probes is that um, these are actually the same probe models came with my SDS uh, 2102 MSO scope, which I purchased a few years ago now. And um, They're different now. The actual clip part here on the end is different. It's got a different mechanism. And an issue I've been having with this particular probe, um, whether it's just this particular set or whether it's different or an issue or not, but you know, the tips are usually, you know, you can remove those tips and, and replace them, right? So when they wear out, you can replace new tips, right? Let's say pull out. Now, this one seems okay. It's in there quite nicely. But what I'll be finding when the tip's a bit loose is it actually pulls out on the probe. So you pull the probe tip off, the actual hook part, and it, it takes the tip off with it. This one seems okay. 
It may be um, temperature related as well, because it depends on how well the actual tip part grips. That one's okay. Alright, that feels alright. Let's try another one. But there's a time I won this probe, I was trying to take the um, hook off and it just kept on coming off with the tip. The tip that stayed in the probe. I'm trying to actually get one to show you that now, but it's not going to do it, is it? But it's an issue that I had. Um, it's funny, last probe. Take the thing off. No, so all of them are going to prove me wrong right now. But before when I was doing these trials and um, all the review stuff, I pulled the hook off and the tip came with it. But this, you know, right now it's, it's going to prove me wrong and be absolutely fine. Oh, there we go. Now it's stuck. All right. So you have to release that because you can't, you know, you see this come off. It doesn't want to come back out. All right. So the other issue is when it happens. Um, this all wants to try and come apart, so I'm, I'm not happy about the actual probe. See, my, my other one, I might carry my SDS um, 2102, that's absolutely fine. I mean, it's, it's got the same probe number, but they don't feel the same, they're just a little bit different. So, um, you know, I, I think there's an issue there where it's not as good as it should be. So, I'll show you how to get this apart. I actually have one of the sticks. Alright, so, so again, just pop that out, pop that out, it does spring out so be careful, alright, so take the collar off, bit the tip stuck in there, alright, so you need to pull the tip back out, put it back together again, and the hook part, the tip of the hook goes into the longest part of that, once it goes that way around, you slide it back in like so, put the collar back in, don't forget the, the, the clippy bits go at the top, and push it until it clicks on both sides and just check the both sides are actually seated in, that one's not quite in, there we go, right, and then you can get the tip and put it back into your probe, um, but this is something you shouldn't really have to do, but yeah, it, it comes with four probes, but the ones that came with the, um, 1202 XE, the other XE, two channel version, um, they seem better than these, they didn't seem as touchy, I don't know why, but, um, but it does come with full price, if you don't put them apart you're fine. <laughs>